Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Na. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Sheikh Na, we've been discussing uh, Qasr prayers and, and the prayers of a traveler. And we went through the conditions and the criteria. We went through um, traveling more than 44 kilometers there and back. We discussed um, that you travel from the the surrounding, not sorry, the border of your city, the near, um, not to change the near, the purpose of travel. It has to be halal. It can't be a haram purpose. Um, is there any other conditions? Uh, and especially, what about those who are travelers, like gypsies or nomads? What about those people? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد The sixth criteria with regard to uh, the salat of the musafir is that that individual should not be a nomad or one of those Bedouin tribes who occasionally travels to get water or pastures for uh, to feed his cattle. They usually travel every three months, every six months from one place to another, maybe even less every month, for example, they travel. In the situations, uh, they cannot pray Qasr because they're always in trouble. They're similar to the one who uh, travels for work, for example, or study. In this case, uh, they shouldn't actually uh, pray uh, Qasr, they have to pray in full in their journeys. And of course, um, they cannot uh, basically uh, follow the rule of, uh, of uh, Salat al-Qasr in this situation. Um, if the nomad, for example, travels for, let's say, Hajj or Umrah and such like, in the situation, those who travel often for these purposes, as I've said, uh, to seek water, to seek such and such. If they go and travel for Hajj, for example, then they have to shorten the Salah. In this situation, no, the, the rule changes. Now they're going for Hajj, for example. In this situation, they have to pray uh, as Qasr. Uh, Is that the same also for those people who travel a lot for business? So merchants, pilots, sailors. Uh, let's say there's an individual, he goes to Saudi Arabia every you know, three weeks because of his business. Um, so he do, it's, it's a frequent, uh, regular travel for work. But this time he's going for Hajj. Would he pray full Salah or Qasr Salah for the Hajj period that he's going for? He's going for pilgrimage. The same rule applies as to the nomad applied to those who work as pilots, drivers, businessmen who travel uh, to the holy cities in, in Arabia, the same situation, if they go uh, for hajj or for pleasure as a holiday, for example, to spend, let's say, a week uh, in Jeddah, for example, uh, or in such places that they used to go to work there occasionally, um, in this situation, they have to pray uh, Qasr, because this journey now is a pilgrimage journey or a holiday journey. It's no longer known to be as a uh, the title of uh, business journey or work journey in which they have to pray full and fast the whole month of Ramadan. In this situation, no, they become just normal travelers and they have to uh, shorten the salah whenever they are in that city. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Sheikh, are there any other conditions or criteria uh, one is obviously n not to be a nomad or a traveler. Um, is there any other criteria in regards to the cost of press? The seventh criteria is the one whose job does not involve frequent traveling. As I mentioned, and we discussed this uh, many times, that this criteria is important. Uh, to be 
able to uh, attain the condition of a uh, traveler and musafir, you should not be uh, a frequent traveler as a businessman, for example. So if you travel often to work in that week, for example, then you cannot pray qasr. That's your job. That's the place you go there, although it's not your hometown, not even your second hometown. If I travel from Manchester to London every day, Manchester is my home, hometown, for example. London is not my hometown. But because I work there every day, I travel every day. In this case, uh, London would be, would be uh, when I arrive there, I pray for, as full. Because I work there, I study there, and such like. But if I go once for a holiday, for a day, let's say, a weekend out, in this case, I become uh, as a musafir, and I have to pray uh, qasr in this situation. Ahsan Shaykhna. What about uh, the final uh, criteria? What, what is the final criteria? The final criteria is to reach city limits. Again, the one who leaves his hometown, um, he must make sure that he reaches a place or a location, as we just explained previously, known as Hadd al yes. The place in which you are permitted to break your fast and to shorten yes. your salah. Yes. If that is met, then you can uh, shorten your salah and pray qasr. And as I mentioned, just seven, eight, few kilometers from the border of your city when the, uh, the sound of the adhan disappears and when the walls of that city, of the houses, disappear and you drive for, let's say, or even walk or run for a few kilometers and the signs of that city disappears, then you start to, uh, to pray Qasr in this situation. So that's the last condition for the one who wishes to uh, travel and make sure that he passes this stage and uh, the, the limit and the boundary uh, from his, his hometown or the place he is residing. Ascent. Thank you, Sheikh. Sheikh, is there actual Qadha prayers for Qasr prayers or do you have to pray in full? We have a, a narration which states uh, that pray whatever you missed as you missed. Oh. ما فات ما فات. As you missed them, you do the qada as, you, as they were. So if you were, let's say, in a two weeks a travel, a ziyar or a holiday, and let's say for whatever reason you missed those two weeks of prayers, and you were as a musafir, qasr, prayers, when you come back home, you pray those two weeks as Qasr, as the, you missed them. Or if you missed them, you were there for 10 days or more. In other words, you stayed, you re resided there. You, you plan to stay there for 10 plus days. In this situation, and you pray them in full. You're supposed to pray them in full. In this situation, you pray them as full. So what was the condition and the state and the situation of the Salah at that time, was it Qasr? You pray the Salah Qadha as Qasr. Was it full? You pray the Qadha as full. It depends. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, what about um, those who deliberately pray their Salah in full? So if we're going on a journey, let's say we're going to spend three days in, in Manchester and um, the individual says, Oh, I don't need to pray Qasr Salah, I can pray the whole amount. Um, does he have to repeat his Salah or is his full Salah accepted? Well, if they are as a travelers and Musafir, they must pray Qasr. They're not allowed to pray in full. They have to repeat the Salah inside the time, to repeat it as Qasr, to shorten the Salah, or to do the Qada afterwards. If you know that you're a traveler, and you must pray Qasr, but you pray in full, the Salah must be repeated. And if outside the time, they have to do the Qadha. As uh, mentioned, they missed it as uh, Qasr, they have to pray as Qasr. They cannot pray it inside or outside the time in full. What if it was done accidentally? What if, because obviously Salah has and does become a habit. 
So if someone's if a musafir says, "Oh, it's Zohar time. I need to go pray Zohar," uh, he forgets that he's a musafir, and you know he prays the full four rakah. Does he have to you know repay uh, the, the the salah? Does he have to do it again the kasr salah, or even I mean if it's after the time, does he have to pray kada or it's okay? It was a mistake. Doesn't matter. Well, if one knows that he's traveling, because that's the first scenario, and he must shorten his salah, he knows. But he performs the salah unintentionally in full. He knows he's, he is a traveler, yes. and he must perform it as qasr, but unintentionally he prays full. In this case, the salah is batil, is void. Okay. So he must repray it again in, as qasr. Because that is the hukum now, as a traveler, to uh, pray the salah as qasr. However, if the one who doesn't know whether or not he's obliged to uh, shorten his salah okay. during the travel, he's not sure. If he performs the salah in full, in this situation, as the said states, his salah is valid. He doesn't know. You see, sometimes I know and I deliberately do it. The salah is batil. Or I know and unintentionally I forget to uh, actually do it uh, in qasr. In this situation, the hukum is different. Here, the situation is that the one he doesn't know whether or not he is obliged to shorten the salah. Yes. He doesn't know the hukum. He's not sure. <laughs> in this case, his salah is valid. Okay. In other words, he doesn't have to repeat the salah. The other scenario is that if somebody forgets that he's traveling and he performs the salah in full, he forgets. He thinks that he is in his own hometown. Especially if you go back, for example, to your own countries, because sometimes our previous homelands, we just left them. So they no longer become our homelands. So we just go for holidays. So you go back home there and you want to pray. Uh, also, but you forget. So you pray in full. The Sayyid says that um, if he remembers that within the Salah prescribed time, that individual must pray and repeat the Salah again in Qasr, okay. inside the time. Okay. However, if the time was expired, in this situation, it is not mandatory for him to perform the Qadha of the Salah. Okay. Because he just forgets. And forgetting mm. sometimes happens, you know, for the one who goes back to his home hometown, yes. previous hometown, that he no longer uh, counts it as his mm. own hometown now. So inside the time he prays it as Qasr again. Outside the time, there's no issue with it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for this discussion. And thank you for all the viewers for joining us. Inshallah, we'll have a new topic on the next episode. Until then, travel safe and make sure you pray your Qadha prayers properly and your custard prayers properly. Inshallah we'll see you soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.